All right, so welcome back. Uh, we will talk about Gauss's law more today. So quickly, last time we talked about the definition for the flux. So it's electric field dot the um, area, um, surface area vector A. Okay, so then magnitude will be E a cosine theta. Actually, it's a, a scalar quantity, so it will then have a direction. <clears throat> um, so for an even surface, um, curved surface, you will do uh, divide into small patches and then you'll sum over um, the flux from each of the small patches to calculate the total uh, flux through the uh, surface. So then uh, if you can divide those patches into small pieces, um, then you are doing integration. Instead of doing um, summation, you are doing integration. Okay, integrate through the whole surface of electric field times the derivative of A um, vector form in that case, uh, open space. And then for a closed space, you actually, for the integration sign, you just make a circle at the middle of the integration. So they indicate this is the integration through a closed surface. And we talk about Gauss's law. So basically it says electric flux, um, um, through a closed surface that should be equal to the charge that is enclosed by this closed surface divided by epsilon naught, the um, permittivity of free space. Okay. And um, so flux can be calculated through this integration of the uh, closed path in that case. So E dot normal direction of the surface and derivative of A. And uh, we talk about applying our Gauss's law. So Gauss, Gauss's law. So basically, you calculate what will be the um, integration. You do the integration, and that you make a surface that on the surface that E will be um, the same magnitude throughout, and then do integrations through that surface. Then that gives you E times the area on the surface. And that should be equal to, according to Gauss's law, equal to Q enclosed by epsilon naught. Then divide both sides by um, the equation by the area, you get this electric field equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught times A, okay? And we look at the application for spherical charge distribution um, last time. So it depends on uh, if you are looking for the electric field inside the charge distribution or outside of the charge distribution. So then you have um, two field inside the sphere and then outside the sphere, okay, in different expressions. Today, we are going to look into um, more applications of Gauss's law into linear charge distribution and then as well as surface charge distribution. And then we also uh, will talk a little about some special cases there. Um, so for a linear charge distribution, because this is not a spherical distribution of charge, then you cannot have a spherical Gaussian surface um, constructed. Um, but you can do a cylindrical Gaussian surface. So in this case, if you have a linear charge distribution lambda along this green line, and if this is um, infinity, so then um, Gaussian surface should be um, you can construct a cylinder with two bottom sides and a uh, side surface here, okay? With the center of the cylinder at the same location as the line um, um, distribution of the charge. So then in that case, um, you'll be looking at flux through those three surfaces, the two bottom surfaces, and then on the, the side surface as well. And that should be equal to according to Gauss's law, equal to the um, charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught, okay? So then let's see how we can get to this um, conclusion, okay? So I'm going to show you on the paper here. So in this case, line charge distribution, right? And then you construct a cylindrical Gaussian surface on one end, the side of it, and then there. Okay, so let's call this as radius r. All right. Now, for a line charge distribution, we know that if this is line charge distribution, right, then electric field is going uh, away, pointing away from the charge, perpendicular to it. Okay, so could be in that direction, that direction, and then all those directions, okay? 
um, if this is a positive charge, right? So going away in that sense. So you can see, and that's the case is because uh, imagine if you have a very long infinity charge distribution, right? At one point here, you, if you take a um, small charge derivative Q, right? So then um, if, let's say if this is the middle of the line, now negative infinity, positive infinity, okay? So due to symmetry, you can find another, um, the same amount of DQ here, right? So then at this point of interest, your electric field, you can see it's going to be in that direction by this part, by this small part, and then by this guy will be in that direction. So along the direction parallel to the line charge, they should cancel out, okay? Positive and negative, and then we'll add up in this radial direction. So electric field is going to be for the line charge distribution is going to be just in the radial direction. Okay then, so then we can calculate um, the flux, total flux, right? So through this bottom surface, because E field is in the radial direction, which is parallel to this bottom surface, right? So normal direction for this surface is in this direction, perpendicular to the E field. So that's going to be giving zero <clears throat> for the flux because Ea cosine theta, cosine theta has been 90 degree. The same on this surface, it's going to be 90 degree. Okay, so zero and zero. Now on this side surface, it's going always going to be perpendicular. Electric field is always going to be perpendicular to the surface if you um, look at that, right? So then it's really, um, and then because this is theoretical, so any point on the surface would have the same um, distance to the this axis, the charge, so R. So then uh, if we simply E times A, area of this side, okay? So E times A for the side of the cylinder is going to be the base, the circumference of this base circle times the height. So two pi R times the length of height will be L. Let's call this L, okay? So for L length of it, Okay, so this is calculating um, flux by just doing um, from the definition of a flux, electric flux, okay, let's reflux using Ea, right, cosine theta for each other surface. On another hand, you apply Gauss's law, so that means uh, Q charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Q charge enclosed for this cylinder will be from here to here, right? Happen to be the length of L. So lambda times L over epsilon naught. So you have flux from here, um, based on the uh, definition of electric flux, and then also flux through Gauss's law. So these two then should equal to each other, the flux, right? So that E times two pi R times L is equal to lambda L over epsilon naught. So then cancellation L, L, you divide both sides by two pi times R, right? So you get this cross out and then two pi R goes down there. So you can see E field then is equal to lambda divided by two pi R epsilon naught, which um, is the, what shows up in the, in the PowerPoint slide, okay? So, two pi times epsilon not r over lambda. That's your E field for infinitely symmetrical or infinity charge line density, okay? So it depends on uh, the distance r that you are away from the line charge, okay? So in that case, all right. So let's go back to the slide, okay, and then now let's take a look on surface charge distribution and then how we apply Gauss's law to solve for that. Okay. okay. So in this case, you have a surface charge distribution. Find the electric field on either side of the sheet as shown here, okay? So in here, again, this is not spherical symmetry. So you cannot have a a uh, spherical Gaussian surface, but we can do the same thing as what we did for the line. So we can have a cylinder, um, in this case, perpendicular to this sheet, okay? If this cylinder has a radius of R, 
and length of L, but it has symmetric with respect to the sheet. So half of the cylinder is on one side and then half of the cylinder is on the other side. So let's take a look on that. So this sheet, positive charge, sigma, positive, positive. I'm going to just put a, a couple of them there. The cylinder here extend one half side on this end and then the other side, half the other half to the other end. So in this case, um, for, for a sheet, right? Again, uh, let me, there's a symmetric. Let me show you here. If you think about, take a small piece of the DQ there, and then due to symmetric, I said this is the center of the sheet. It extends um, infinitely to either side, okay? And then this guy. So at a point over here, so you can see there's an electric field by this one in this direction, and then there's electric field by that one in that direction. So the vertical direction E field of these two will cancel out, okay? So then it leaves you only the total electric field to be in the direction that is perpendicular to the sheet, okay? And that's why we could construct a Gaussian um, cylinder, cylindrical surface like that, perpendicular to the sheet, okay? So now in this case, on the side of the cylinder here, you will have no electric flux because E field is perpendicular to the surface, which means parallel to the um, side surface. So phi from the side will be zero. Now plus on one side here, this will be E perpendicular to this surface. So E times pi R square, because this is a circle area of a circle is pi R to the square. On the other side, okay, so you will see that E field actually on the other side is going to be also perpendicular to a circle, but pointing in the other direction, that's the E field, because that should be symmetric on both sides of, of the sheet, okay? You can do the same analysis here and then sketch E field by this patch going in this direction, by that one going into the opposite direction or the other direction. So it will only result in the, um, and net E field in that direction. So then on this surface, it's also going to be E pi R square, okay? Now again, Gauss's law says that should be equal to E enclosed over epsilon naught. In this case, E enclosed will be equal to this part of the surface, okay, being enclosed. So that will be sigma surface charge density times area, which is pi R square over epsilon naught. So then this is two E, pi r square, this is this guy. So these two should equal to each other because they are both uh, electric flux. So e times two pi r square equals to sigma pi r square over epsilon naught. Pi r square and pi r square cancel. The two will come down here. So then e equals sigma divided by two epsilon naught, okay? for the magnitude and direction will be perpendicular to the sheet on both sides, okay? And pointing away from the sheet, okay? All right. So let's take a look on one example here. So this is the application of uh, surface um, charge distribution. Now you have two sheets instead of one. So it says an infinity thin sheet at in the y equal to zero plane has a uniform surface charge of sigma one equal to 65. So this plane in the xz plane, y equal to zero. A second infinity sheet has a uniform surface charge of sigma equal to 45. Uh, Newton's uh, the nano coolant per centimeter square and intersect at the y equal to plane at the z axis and makes the angle 30. So this angle is 30. As shown in the figure, find the electric field at this point, six and two meters. So x and y at that, so x and y somewhere could be here. Six and two looks like it might be here or could be a little bit above. So it depends on, uh, what angle uh, of this six and two coordinate there will be corresponding to. Okay, so then in that direction. Okay, 
So first, let's take a look on what this location will be with respect to this surface, okay? So we're going to um, turn to the paper. I'm going to just roughly sketch this one. So it says x, y, and z in that direction, z direction. Okay, so there's a surface on the plane, sigma one. The surface make an angle of, as it says, 30 degrees, okay, sigma two. So this is one, this is two. This is 30. So let's take the coordinate x equal to six and then see what will be um, a point on the surface. This surface second has the x equal to six, okay? So then on that, you'll do like, this is six, right? And then you are somewhere there, 30 degree, six, and then 30 degrees. So you'll be doing six times tangent of that to get that, okay? So for um, y on the second plane, that's going to be 6 meters times tangent of 30. So that tells you this is, should be 3.46 meters. Okay. So that means the point 6 and 2 meters is in between in between the two planes. Okay, two planes. So somewhere here. Okay, so that's where this point is. So the electric, electric field by this point, according to this sheet, right, it's pointing away from it. So that will be going in this direction. So E1 by this sheet will be perpendicular to this guy. So you'll draw a line perpendicular to that one and then pointing away from that, so E2, okay? So there's E1 and E2. The overall electric field should be equal to E1 plus E2. They are vectors, right? Now E1, it will be just in the uh, vertical Y direction. So E1, I think that's easy. E1 is equal to the magnitude will be equal to sigma one, right? Divided by two times of epsilon naught as what we um, derived in the previous um, slide. It's direction. So if you want to integrate direction, this is a vector. It will be just in the y direction. So times j direction. Okay. E2 here, it will have a um, x and y component. Okay. So if this is 30, then in this case, let's see if you have a point over there. So from geometry point of view, if this angle is 30, then this angle is 30, okay? So then this will be 60. So this angle will be 60. So you are 60 degrees below the um, x axis for E2. But we can do the um, just magnitude first. So be the sigma 2 over 2 times epsilon naught, okay? And then for its vector, we know the angle of that will be our angle of two will be minus 60 degree, okay? From the geometry, so that's minus 60 degree. So then um, we can do the, it's X component and Y component, right? <clears throat> so the X component of this guy will be psi of 30 because this is 60, or we can do uh, cosine of 60 minus 60, okay? That's fine. Um, but we can calculate the magnitude of these two first. So the first one, sigma one will be 65, 10 to the minus nine coulombs over meter square divided by two times 8.85, 10 to the minus 12 fra per meters. Okay, so that gives you, um, 3.67 10 to the third newtons over coulomb. For E2, so this is E1, for E2 is uh, 45 
times 10 to the minus three or minus nine Newton of coolness over meter squared two times a point a five times 10 to the minus 12 for lot per meters. So that equals to 2.54 times 10 to the third Newton's coolness. E total of x should be E1 of x plus E2 of x, where this is zero. So it'll be just E2 of x will be E2 cosine of minus 60, okay? So that's 1.27 times 10 to the third Newton's coolant. And E of y will be equal to E1y plus E2y, right? E1y is whatever you have there, 3.67 times 10 to the third Newtons over coolants plus E2y will be E2, 2.54 times 10 to the third Newtons per coolant times cosine, or sine in this case, sine of minus 60 degrees. So that would be 1.47, 10 to the third Newtons over coolant, okay? So the total, the magnitude, E is equal to EX squared plus EY squared, okay? 1.27 times 10 to the third Newtons over coolant squared plus 1.47 times 10 to the third Newtons over coolant squared. And that gives you 1.94 times 10 to the third Newtons over coolant. Okay, so for the magnitude, for well, the directional angle is tangent inverse of E y over E x. Tangent inverse, y being 1.47, x 1.27, they are both 10 to the third angle over C, 10 to the third angle over C, okay? So that gives you 49.2 degrees. That's the directional angle because EX is greater than zero. So you don't have to add 180. Okay, so magnitude and direction. Okay. <clears throat> so going back to the slide. So we have done this example. Now let's move on. This is another example. So in this case, it says a uniform charge non-conducting solid sphere, so spherical charge. A radius R has a center at origin and has a volume charge density of rho. Material is removed from the sphere, leaving a spherical cavity that has a radius of B equal to half of R. And it's centered at B, X equal to B on the X axis. Calculate the electric field at point one and two, as shown in the figure. So here, spherical, think about this as spherical. So this is a cross-sectional area. Hint, hints, and the hint says model the sphere with cavity with as two uniform sphere of equal magnitude but opposite signs of charge density. Okay, so you can think about this guy as have two spheres overlapping together. One is having positive rho, the other one is having minus rho. Okay, so then the whole distribution of charge is a complete solid sphere with density of rho plus this small one with a minus rho, right? Okay, so then let's take a look on uh, this one. It says calculate electric field at point one and point two. Okay. So, <clears throat> For the electric field at point one and two, again, we probably wanted to sketch this problem first. So point one, point two. Um, for, for point one here, so it's really electric field by this sphere of uh, minus rho, and then the electric field by this bigger one, positive rho, right? So um, electric field on E1, so on one, E1 is called E1, should be equal to electric field um, by this guy, and then plus electric field by that guy. 
Now, for uniform charge distribution of sphere, you can think about just assuming it's similar to the um, electric field by all the charge at the center. Okay, so then point charge. So KQ um, of this one on that guy. Okay. So in this case, oh, let me just say E is like E1 plus E2, or um, let's do minus E2. So because um, E1 for the bigger one is pointing outward, right? And then for this minus, it's going to be pointing towards its center, E2. So E1 and E2, so it should be E1 minus E2 because this is negative, so that's giving it to be in that direction, okay? Um, so in this case, they are both in x direction, okay? So you can just um, use the positive and negative sign for that. So for the larger one, it's going to be, you can use Gaussian's law, right? Gaussian's law to def define, determine what would be the E field here, or as I said, it's you can approximate as the, the charge at the center here and then pointing outward. But let's use Gauss's law here. So the outer surface of this bigger sphere then is a Gaussian surface. So then E1, E1 times A will be four pi um, R square. So in this case, this is A four pi A square. It's equal to over all the charge inside divided by epsilon naught, right? So um, that's what we, have, what we have been doing. So at this point, I will just, I will not write two equations um, and then put their result together, but I will just um, put their result together, okay? Without the writing out the two equations, okay? So the then uh, charge in cross V rho times the volume of the spheres, uh, three or four over three pi R to the Q, in, which is A over epsilon naught. So, four pi a square will cancel out four pi and q. So e1 is equal to rho a over three epsilon naught. The same thing for this guy, for the um, charge or by this one, e2 times four pi, in this case, b to the square, right? The Gaussian surface on the small sphere that equals to minus rho. Four over three, pi, now b to the q over epsilon naught. So e2 is equal to then uh, just minus of, so this case is the same, four pi b squared will cancel out four pi and the q minus rho b over three epsilon naught. So then total e, that should be e1 plus e2, right? One in positive, one the other in negative. So rho of a over three epsilon naught minus rho of b three epsilon naught. So that should be rho over three epsilon naught a minus b, okay? And then b is half of a, so you can just also uh, use that as um, half of or b, a is r, a is r, b is half of r, okay? So this could be also just, um, rho r, r minus half is one half, okay? So one half times three will be six epsilon naught. And in the positive x direction, so that will be the electric field, okay? Uh, for part b, it's asking you will be electric field at that point. So by this sphere, small sphere of minus rho, it's going to be now in this direction. E2, but by the bigger solid sphere, it's going to be zero because now you are at the center of zero, right? Because of symmetric, then everything at this point will be zero. So then it will be simply, this time E will be just equal to E2, but in the positive direction, okay? E2 uh, in the positive direction. So that will be now, instead of having minus of that, um, you're doing rho B over three epsilon naught, which, Again, B is equal to half of R, so it'll be the same of rho R over six epsilon naught, but in this in that direction. So it's basically the same, okay, as your first part. All right. So let's go back to the slide.
So moving on, let's take a look on um, conductors in electrostatic. Okay, so for conductors, there are uh, several uh, characters about it in electrostatic uh, equilibrium. So the first thing is the charge, if there's charge on the conductor, they are going to stay on the um, surface. Okay, because if not, if you imagine that charges are inside here, because conductors, they are charges inside, they are free to move around. So then in that case, um, they will repel each other, right? So as the result, all the charges will be staying on the outer surface or on the surface, okay? So that's the first thing, charge on a conductor resides on its surface. Um, the second uh, character is inside the conductor, the electric field is going to be zero. And the reason is, so if inside the conductor over here, right? Um, if not, if you have net charge inside the conductor, so, uh, um, right. No, if you have, if you don't have um, um, net electric zero electric field inside it at certain point, then because conductor atoms have free electrons to move, right? Then net charge will drive the electrons to move around. So, then rearranging the electrons that means the charge will be redistributed. Okay, so at the end, you should have um, the, the charge or the electric field inside the conductor to be zero. So then no more uh, rearrangement of the uh, electrons will be going on because this is now the electrostatic um, condition. Okay, so inside the conductor, electric field will be zero. And that's why if you have a um, Metal shoot, you will be safe uh, inside the metal shoot because you, know, you can play with high voltage, but inside the shoot, the electric field is equal to zero. Or in the airplane, if it's struck by lightning, um, passengers inside should be still uh, safe because the airplane outside are made of metals. The third character is the electric field um, is always perpendicular to the surface of conductor. Okay, so um, in that case, so let's say if if not, right, if it's not um, perpendicular to the surface, in this case, then the charge over here uh, will have a force component that is not in the perpendicular direction, right? So then it will have a tangential direction. So that means this charge will be redistributed until that, that line is, electric field line is perpendicular to the surface. So then the force is only in the perpendicular direction that will not move the charge around, okay? And in that sense, we will uh, also know that on the surface of the conductor, it should be a uh, equipotential field uh, surface because the electric field lines and the surface are perpendicular to each other. All right. So if you are inside conductor, if you have a Gaussian surface inside the conductor, so then, the net flux should be equal to zero because inside the conductor, you should have no charge, right? So no charge, that means no flux because Gaussian surface, uh, uh, flux through the Gaussian surface is equal to charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught, but there's no charge, so equal to zero. And just outside of the surface, okay? So then um, you can actually draw a small uh, circle over here and then make a, kind of cylinder perpendicular to the surface, but a very small one that is, is just above the surface, extended just right above the surface, and then also just in into the surface a little bit, okay? So in that case, this is um, then different to a, like a, a sheet of material where we get like epsilon electric field equal to epsilon divided by two times of the, or sigma divided by two times of epsilon. Remember that a couple of slides back? Here, and if you look at the note, it's um, sigma divided by uh, two times of epsilon. But in this case, because you have a conductor here, you can come with a Gaussian surface. So then, the side inside the conductor, because electric field inside is zero, so you get zero flux through that surface. But just right outside the, the conductor, you get E field times the surface. Okay, then. This single E field is going to be equal to sigma times A divided by epsilon naught. Okay, so E times A 
equal to sigma times a divided by epsilon naught. That's Gauss's law says, right? So in this case, then your E field actually doubles as it is in the um, case of the, uh, the sheet, just the charge sheet, okay? So in this case, E field is equal to sigma over epsilon naught on the surface of a conductor, okay? If you have a charge inside a spherical shell, now this is um, just to make you see the inside, but this is um, just a kind of cross-sectional, but it's um, help you to visualize. So you can imagine this is a, a complete intact um, sphere, okay? If you have a charge inside it. So initially this conductor should be um, neutral. And because of that, now positive charge will be on the outside surface, in, uh, negative charge will be inside the surface, okay? So you can draw a blue Gaussian surface just in between the inner shell and outer shell, or inner surface and outer surface of the shell. And in that case, you'll see um, E on this surface is zero because you are inside the conductor. Times A is equal to zero, right? So E times A, E is zero, times A will be zero. Then equal to charge enclosed. So then charge enclosed will be the charge of this one and then the negative charge of the inner surface over here. So you can see the total charge on the inner surface should be equal to this guy, right? Because charge enclosed should be zero, okay? And then because of that, because originally the shell is neutral, zero. So if you have minus Q on the inner surface, then on the outer surface, you'll have positive Q. Okay, because charge is conserved, um, you are not creating charges in that sense, okay? So then, yeah, you'll get minus Q here, plus Q there, okay? The same amount as this charge here. You can move the charge to be not at the center of the surface, but still enclosed by this sphere. Then you still get minus Q on the inner surface overall, and then the positive Q over the um, outer surface. Just the density of the charges will be um, not uniform on the either the inner surface or the outer surface. Okay, okay. This is again um, a result of the um, Gaussian's law. Okay. All right. So that will be it for today. I'll see you um, at another time, the next time. I'll see you guys.